Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jason Park here with Hyper2 Productions. I'm a filmmaker. I've made four features and currently we're in production on our fifth feature. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about the state of Hollywood. Hollywood is dying, right? And it will continue to die. And I do not see where there's a recovery or a bounce back for anybody within that space. And I'm going to explain to you why um, I see it going this way the trends that are taking place currently within that space. So if you rewind it back a little bit, in the 80s, in the 90s, I mean, if you were SAG and you were union, you could make a living off being an extra, right? 300 bucks a day. I mean, you could literally make a good living just being an extra. In those time periods, you had your movie come out, they would make those $3 million films, $5 million films, and then occasionally you get the 20, $50 million film, but 80s, 90s, early 2000s, you had your blockbusters, you had your uh, video warehouse, you had your uh, Hollywood rent, like you had your rentals for the VHSs and the DVDs, right? So when a movie would go to the box office, if it made its money and it was a hit, awesome, everyone's happy. If it didn't make its initial money or its budget at the box office, it would come down and it would recoup all of its money through video rentals and video purchases because at this time physical media was extremely strong i mean everybody and their mama you hit a friday night i'm renting it for three nights i'm gonna pay that extra that extra fee for that three nights or i'm gonna buy it and own the media myself then as you navigate towards later 2000s and now 2024 you, you look at something like marvel and disney you're talking about comic books that have generations damn near almost 80 years 100 years of of fan base and followers and they put hundreds of millions millions of dollars behind this elongated fan base you know of comics or these characters with this long fan base and you have these named actors with the best directors and the best cinematographers and color graders and music score designs, all this good stuff. And the movies still flop. And then you have your hits, right? Like the golden age of Marvel, we're gonna call it the days where, you know, Iron Man came out, Captain America, Avengers, all that stuff. That was like the golden age, right? So then the, the last couple of films, were, it was kind of in a slump and then it had Deadpool and Wolverine came out and now it's just blasting and it's, it's kind of that one-off Marvel so far. They've even said it where, hey, we tried the woke thing for phase four, it didn't work, we're gonna go back to what we know, right? But if you look at that, how many companies in the world are Marvels? How many studios are producing Marvel-esque films? Not many, and even at those levels of those films, if they're original and they don't have a backing, good luck, right? Because Nowadays, it's all sequels. It's all number two, three, four, five. Producing something original is very, very tough. And if you look at the box office on all of the things that have done extremely well, Inside Out 2, that was a sequel. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, that's essentially Deadpool 3. You start looking at these, these films that are making money, it's very rare that you're finding something that's original and making money. So then you, you, you move Disney and Marvel, right? That's mainly wrapped around kids and you got your action is typically PG, PG-13. So that audience is always going to do well because parents are gonna take their kids to go and watch and support that project. So let's kind of move that out the way and you go to Hollywood itself. You go to all of the production companies that are making movies and films and trying to cast these actors and such. 90% of them are not making any money. They're spending money, but they're not making any money. Like 60% of the jobs have gone down since last year with the strike. That's everything, writers, producers, everything. The, the, the pool and the amount of films created, films, not content, has decreased over the year, year over year. And if you look at the trajectory, it's just, it just keeps decreasing. Why? Because the amount of money it takes and the amount of resources it takes to make one project, there is not a recoup. So if you have a product, you're not gonna spend $100 if you only ever get back $20. Eventually, you're gonna stop spending $100, right? So that's essentially what's happening with films. 
So filming in the state of California is extremely expensive because everybody knows what's going on. They all want their money and they all want permits, right? So that's why you have these companies divvy up outside of California and they go to Georgia, they go to Kansas, they go to these different places, Texas, to go and shoot their projects because of the tax breaks and the incentives and it's just cheaper to shoot. Content has risen. Why? Because content like this, me talking to you, anybody can do from their house. Content has risen, but film has gone down and it will only continue to go down because of the competition that it has to compete with everything else. That's why I made another video where I was like, hey, I believe film will become niche, movies will become niche, and it will become what theaters are today or what plays are today, what you go with your significant other, you go watch it, oh, it's an event, but you're not doing it every single weekend. Why? Because I'm pretty sure you're guilty of it, I'm guilty of it as well, and I actually make movies. And I'm guilty of it where I'll be watching something and then I'll go on my phone and look at social media or I'll go, you know, look at some videos or something like that. So that competition is stifling the growth of film and it will continue to do so. Strikes, they're not helping anybody. I'm going to tell you right now, they're not helping the industry at all. Because what happened is, let's say you strike and you're like, hey, we want to do this only for 500 bucks for eight hours or whatever the amount is. Okay, cool. But, in, but now, because the price has risen all the way around, instead of there being 100 projects, now there's only 15 projects. Now, in a already competitive field, they're not even looking at you and me, they're looking at Robert Downey Jr. and the people that have proven track records. So it's gonna go through all of the A-listers first before it ever comes to you to even audition. That's why if you look at the biggest projects that gross the most amount of money, they typically have the A-listers and their legacy A-listers from the 90s and the 80s, they're, they're back then actors, right? That's why they brought back Robert Downey Jr. and they're giving him $80 million to be Doom because of his proven track record with the Iron Mans and the Avengers. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna go and reach back to some of those other legacy actors and they're gonna bring them back in to kind of swing that momentum back and capture some of that old magic. So when you really think about it and you really break down the jobs of Hollywood with technology getting greater. There's going to be a resurgence of indie film and it's already happening, right? The indie films are going to explode everywhere. You're gonna see them everywhere because it's now easier than it's ever been to make films. And you know, indie films are the things that have built up the Netflixes and the Tubi's and the Freebies. Like indie films is what built these things up. Then when they get to a certain size, they cut out the indie filmmakers and they go towards more big, uh, big budgeted films. But even Netflix recently said, hey, we need to go back to indie films. Why? Because with indie films, you're getting the creativity of originality and you're getting people that are just kind of being creative in how they're making their projects, right? They're not dependent and reliant on, on Hollywood's big budget or big money to make something because it moves like a slug. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're trying to raise money, you're trying to make a project within the Hollywood system, you may have to wait years before that gets off the ground. But if I go and talk to my actor buddies and I'm like, yo, y'all wanna make this film, let's make it, we can go start shooting it next week. Why? Because I already made the script, I own all the equipment, I know how to work it. Like, the days of the big Goliath system, that's coming to a close. It may not be this year, it may not be in five years, but I guarantee you within 20 years, that's gonna to come to a close because what's gonna happen is my kids, my, the, the generation that's behind, so my son is eight, I'm 30 some, right? So that's three generations behind. They're growing up consuming, right? The everyday content. They're consuming the, the me or the you or your kid or your friend or the Mr. Beast that are recording and are self-efficient and, and self-producing content and then they're navigating towards what they like, right? So for example, if I'm currently working on a film, I'll consume a lot of color grading uh, uh, or indie film or director conversations. That is what I consume nonstop, why? Because I'm in that space. So that becomes the content that's super valuable to me. But for you, you may be working on your car and all you do is work on your car. You add a lip kit, you change the oil, man. You're adjusting the spring rate or the dampers on your suspension system. That is what you consume, that is what you like. So for you, that is more engaging than a movie, right? 
And someone could say, well, okay, the evolution of movie will be, you know, where you're the main character. Yes, but that's video games. And video games are already evolving to where you have the MetaQuest 3, the Apple, the PSVR 2, and you're controlling it that way. That would just be a bridge to video games where movies used to never have, they didn't have that competition, right? If you compare the Super Nintendo to watching a movie, they were two completely different things. But now if movies are gonna become more engaging and not just be a 2D thing that's on the wall, then it naturally would mold into something where you're now the lead character, you're now Vin Diesel in the Fast and the Furious and you're kind of going through it. But then again, now that's just a video game. So the competition has risen, the, the, the cost of making projects have risen, but people consuming the products hasn't fallen but they don't support it in the same way because of the streaming model. For example, if you're lucky enough to get your film as an indie filmmaker on a Netflix, right? Here's what people don't know. Let's say they give you, they're like, hey, we'll put your film on our platform for $30,000. Now, every filmmaker and their mom was probably gonna take it because you worked so hard to make the project and now Netflix wants it. Oh my gosh, that's like, the dream, right? Outside of it being uber successful, right? That's the dream. So you may even take a hit to get it on Netflix. Now, if it's $30,000 for a three year deal, they're gonna give you that $30,000 after the three years is up, then you get your check. So it's very, very interesting how everything's taking place because they're not gonna give the indie filmmakers a lot of money for their indie project. Why would they? They're gonna reserve that for Hollywood's big project, right? That took $100 million, maybe they offer 80 million or 120, whatever it is, to then go put on their platform. And if you notice, a lot of the content on Netflix is original content. So when you think about Hollywood and you think about it, it, it's slowly decreasing. I mean, you can do a simple Google search. You can look up on YouTube, acting jobs, writing jobs, producing jobs, um, grip jobs, everything across the board has almost been cut in half. And that trend is not going to stop because it costs so much to make these projects and the return is just not there. I'm Jason Park with Hyper2 Productions. See you guys next time.